Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am doing this video alone because Neon isn't a big K-drama person. I have tried to convert him, but I have not been successful at this point. But we're going to talk about K-drama a little bit today because for some reason that I cannot fathom at all, they're giving XO Kitty a second season on Netflix. And the first season sucked. So we're gonna talk about that. Before we get into any further, please like and subscribe. And if you do, here's a woohoo, woohoo. Okay, so XO Kitty. <sighs> okay, you know, if you follow along, you know I like K-drama a lot. And my daughter also watches different kinds of K-drama, anime, that kind of stuff too. So Netflix had this show called Exo Kitty, and the best way I can describe it is if the CW decided they were gonna try to make a K-drama. It is not good. Now they got some different, you know, K-drama actors in it. Uh, the one the one person in it, uh, this person here is like 30 years old, playing a high school kid. Um, the couple of these people are actors that are in other K-dramas. But they decided they were going to make this K-drama for Americans, that it's this Americanized K-drama that's an insult to K-dramas. And if you're someone who watches K-dramas normally, this ain't it. It was I, CW K-drama is the best way I can describe it. It was really stupid. Some girl who's half Korean, who I don't even think is maybe, I don't know if she is or not, but she doesn't seem to be from uh, you know, America goes to Korea to go to this uh, international school because her boyfriend that she's been dating online is there. Yeah, no, this is not a K-drama. This sucks. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we get another season of this shit, but we didn't get a second season of Lockwood and Company. Lockwood and Co. was really, really, really good. It didn't try to be something it wasn't. It was good show. And we didn't get a second season of that, but no, no, we get more Exo Kitty. So some brain trust over at Netflix, so they needed a write-off, decided that after a month, they're going to they're gonna announce that there's a new season because it was in the top 10, 10 rankings. Number two is 72.1 million hours viewed. Yeah, Lockwood & Company was one of the top, it was in the top rankings too. This show is dumb. People probably watched the first episode because there's a lot of K-drama fans on Netflix because Netflix gets a lot of really good shows. Like I'm watching... Like right here, some different ones they have on like Dr. Ch I'm watching The Good Bad Mother, which is actually pretty good. Um, Netflix has a lot of really good K-dramas on it. It's pretty popular with people who like K-dramas. So yeah, people probably went into that thinking, oh my, it's going to be another really good K-drama or it's a K-drama that's more relatable to me because it's it's a you know, part American. No, it sucks. And because they kiss in the ass of the person's all the boys that love before film franchise, because that's what this is a spinoff of. That, you know, because it's been off of that. People are watching because that. But as far as being a good show, it was not. It was really not a good show. Um, I watched most of it. I couldn't watch the whole thing because it was just fucking stupid. All right. Here, it's not just me. And you're like, well, yeah, they said you judgy, whatever. No, it's not just me. If you go out to Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the, the critics with no idea how many gave it an 82%. That could be like five people. And the audience score gave it a 58%. Now, I'm trying to see what was said, and it's not letting me see anything on here. Okay. And the fact that top critics is an 80 and all critics 82 means makes you think that it wasn't that many people. That is Exo Kitty. If you go out to Lockwood and Company, 93% uh, critics, again, no number here to show you how many, 94% audience score. And I saw a lot of people talking about Lockwood and Company, how good it was, as opposed to Exo Kitty. God, the show, is, I can't even, with this, I don't even understand what they thought when they were doing this. I, don't, I can't understand this because the show was so... It was clearly trying to be a K drama, but doing it, like, but, but trying to be what Americans who don't watch K dramas think K dramas are. So it literally came across as like a CW teen drama. It, it just, it's not, it was not good. It just wasn't good. Sorry. Lockwood and Company was actually pretty good. It was like, it was about, um, like people with psychic abilities, like in the in the future, this other time frame, whatever. I think it's supposed to be the past, but it's like this other time, like different place. And ghosts are real. And when ghosts touch you, you die. People are being killed by ghosts. And they have people that fight them. And, you know, she's psychic and she has powers and stuff. And they have to fight ghosts. It's really, really good. It deserved a second season. It didn't get one. But fucking XO Kitty gets a second season. And no offense to the actors in the show, 
but your show wasn't good. And some of, and some of the actors I've seen in other shows. Now, speaking of, of, of Netflix, there are a lot of really good K-dramas on Netflix right now. They could have used as an example. Like right here, we have, we have Squid Game. Tomorrow is really good. It's one of the ones I recommended. Um, they've got a bunch of new ones on here. Dr. Cha, I haven't gotten to see that one yet. The Good Bad Mother is actually pretty good. I'm watching it now. Extraordinary Attorney Woo, fantastic. Crash Laying on You, fantastic. Boys Over Flowers, good. Business Proposal, great. Um, the, the King's Affection is pretty good. The Glory, everybody's raving about. I haven't got to see that one yet. There is a lot of really good ones. I want to see Bloodhounds, which is new too. But there's a, a, there's a lot on here. Queen Maker, people say, is really good. Haven't got to watch it. But they have, a, you know, a lot of really, really, really good K-drama on here. So they have this, the K2 is really good, that you can go watch, right? But, you know, no, they expected you to go watch Exo Kitty. They had lots and lots and lots of things they could look at to study, to make sure they knew what the hell they were doing. And instead they gave us Exo Kitty because it was just trying to be, to all the boys I loved before part five or whatever it is on now. I saw the first one. Second one I thought was redundant and I stopped watching after that. The first one was pretty good. But I'm like, we don't need a K-drama spinoff. Like, what's popular? Hot damn. To all the boys we loved before. And it's kind of got Asian-y people in it. What else is popular? I know, K-drama. Hot diggity dog. Let's put them together. And we got a winner. No. You do not have a winner. It sucks. Whoever you are, slap yourself because you're fucking stupid. Anyway, um, not related to Netflix, but we talked about it before. I want to tell everybody, I did finish The Tale of the Nine-Tailed, which I don't believe is on Netflix. I think it was on Hulu. Anyway, I did finish The Tale of the Nine-Tailed 1938, which is the second part. Highly recommend. That one is a good show. That is a good K-drama. Tale of the Nine-Tailed. The original one, also very good K-drama. Highly recommend. I'm hoping there's a third one because it's just that good. Exo Kitty, no. If you think that's what a good K-drama is, educate yourself because it's not. That's not even a K-drama. That Okay, it's a K-A with a lowercase K and a capital A drama because it's some American dumbass trying to pretend they're Korean and I don't know. Or maybe it's Canadian. I don't know. So it's like a... A K with a K drama with a C, like a can't drama because it's not and it sucks. I don't know. It's just stupid and they shouldn't have done it. Anyway, please like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can tell my pitch. Setting? Yeah, you can you can sell you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it. <laughs> It does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's, it's bringing the decibels down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.